Hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. I am your host, Anon Jr., and we are getting ready to start Season 8 of Games Revisited. We're going to play The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. This is the third released game in the Legend of Zelda series. So you had The Legend of Zelda, Legend of Zelda 2, Link's Adventure, and then Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Now, what's curious is that A Link to the Past in the chronology of the Legend of Zelda universe actually occurs before the first few games. Also, fun little bit of useless information, A Link to the Past is the second Zelda game that I ever played. I started with The Legend of Zelda 2, Link's Adventure, played this one, and then went back and played the original at some point later on. Uh, just a little bit about the game itself. Keep in mind, this came out for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, SNES. <laughs> and uh, one of the podcasts I was listening to, they were talking about how there's going to be a next generation in, uh, Nintendo Switch in development. And one of the guests, I think it was Lamar Wilson, pretty sure it was Lamar Wilson, said if they don't call it the Super Nintendo Switch, they're missing out on a perfect opportunity. Anyway, so Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, came out in 1991 in Japan, 1992 in North America and Europe. It was for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. It's the third game in the Legend of Zelda series, release order, first game in... Uh, well, not first, but before the first before the first two in chronology. Um, this is where a few trademark things that that become uh, regular pieces of the Zelda games going forward are introduced. Things like the hookshot, things like the Pegasus boots, um, or. Sorry, they're Pegasus shoes and a link to the past. Pegasus boots everywhere else we go. Um, we, we get a little bit more uh, of, like, arrows are now individual items, like bombs were in the first game. Uh, I, I kind of forgot that in, in the first game, you, you just spent a rupee every time you shot an arrow. Like, 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 you didn't even have to bother collecting the arrows. Just the money, you, you shot the money out of your pocket. Um, which is kind of how some of these games feel from time to time. But that's another for another time. Um, like the first game, it's a top-down perspective. Because if you, if you ever played uh, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link... Hello, Beach Duck. Uh, if you ever played Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, then you'll know that there was a little bit of top-down-ish in the world map as you moved around. But as you entered towns and dungeons and encounters in the field, it would actually move to a side-scrolling element, which was unique to that game, and uh, that was pretty much the only time they did that. Everything else has been top-down from then. Uh, and unlike Zelda 2, you only get one life in A Link to the Past. You don't get multiple lives. You do get hearts. You can add to them with heart containers by finding pieces of heart. And this is the first appearance of what's going to become one of the one of the big Zelda trademarks, where there's two parallel worlds. You've got the light world and the dark world, and you'll travel between them. And it makes for some interesting puzzles and conundrums and things. Um, it's also kind of worth pointing out that a Link to the Past was unique as an SNES game beyond just being a new entry into the Zelda legacy. And at the time this game came out, most SNES games had 512 kilobytes of storage. And this was the first game to break that trend, cramming an entire megabyte of storage. One megabyte. Um, remember, this is 1992. All right. Uh, one megabyte was a lot of storage then. Um, I've never felt more old. Do we even... Me is there anything that we measure in megabytes anymore? It's all gigabytes and terabytes. 
and I'm waiting for what I know. Anyway, sorry, old man moment there. Um, and one of the other unique things that they did is in order to make the best use of that one megabyte of space, which is already double what most of the cartridges were using up until then, um, in order to get the most out of it, they limited the color depth of the graphics and used some special compression techniques like uh, Nintendo used in Super Mario World. And this, this is what allowed A Link to the Past to have, relative to what was available at the time, an absolutely massive map. Like, it, the, the, compared to the other games that were available at the time and have been released prior, this is huge. And they did some other shenanigans to, to allow it to be huge without taking up too much of the space that was available. Uh, by doing things like the light world and the dark world have the same overarching structure. And the dark world exists only as an overlay on the light world. Uh, we, so you get that nice game mechanic, but it also doubles as a way to get more map for your memory. And, and that kind of stuff. Um, all sorts of other fun little tricks. Just, you know, one of those things that that's a little bit about the game itself. Uh, and again... It is a fond game for me. I, I played it in my youth. I thoroughly enjoyed it then, although at the time I had to borrow my friend's Nintendo Power Magazine to uh, manage some of the puzzles. I really tried to do this one without it, but there was a couple that at that time I just could not figure out without the Nintendo Power Magazine. This is also one of those games that I remember... Uh, <laughs> I remember trading with a friend of mine. We 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 you know swap cartridges every now and again. And so this is the game I let him borrow. So that way I could borrow Secret or Mana, which may eventually end up on Games Revisited at some point in the very near future. How near? I don't know. I I, I never really with a couple of very rare exceptions, I haven't really thought about the next game until I'm nearing the end of the current game. So Keep that in mind as we go. All right, last little bit of introductory stuff, and then I'll get into the game itself. I am using the same gamepad that I've been using for all the other console games. Um, looks a little kind of like a, a PlayStation Xbox-ish game. It you know shapes a little more PlayStation. It registers to Windows as an Xbox. Um, this is going to be a source of frustration. Again, because I, I can't tell if the camera is going to actually get this through, but if you look at uh, this off-brand 8-bit DO um, SNES-style controller, which eventually I will get an actual proper 8-bit DO controller. Uh, maybe not, if I keep dropping it like that. Uh, because I really... I, I grew up on this thing. This feels comfortable to me. Uh, this off-brand, off-label one is, uh, the keys are a little mushy, so maybe, maybe, maybe I'll find a higher quality one, but the crux of what I'm getting at here is if you look, look at which one's A and which one's B and which one is X and which one is Y, and then look here at which one is A and which one is B. B and which one is X and which one is Y and you'll notice that on modern controllers they're reversed so I, I have an entire childhood of muscle memory of needing the inside buttons for the important stuff and now the more responsive and uh, comfortable controller has them reversed. So if I fumble for buttons, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. It, it, it is a reversal of a childhood of muscle memory. <clears throat> okay, enough with that. Let's actually get to the game proper. I, I, I saved you the, the struggles of uh, the, the opening credit scene only because I didn't want it to keep zipping through. And, uh, well, yeah, exactly. Like riding a bike backwards or something. Um, 
so we are all right make sure i remember which one's b all right so we're gonna go ahead and start a new player register your name this is the name that you're going to be referred to as throughout the game so naturally we're going to go a n o is there a lowercase or is it? oh oh there's a lowercase never mind back up back up back up back up i don't want them to be yelling at me anon a n o n are just big enough <laughs> yes kids back in the day you couldn't have arbitrarily length name characters because re remember what I said earlier the cartridges were only just now getting to be a megabyte in storage a singular one megabyte 1024 kilobytes all right, I'll stop feeling old. No, I, I won't stop feeling old. I'll stop with the old talk for a little while. Maybe, possibly. All right, there we go. There's my player. Uh, you do have three slots. It, it was often uh, when you got into some areas where you weren't sure how things were going to go, it was definitely possible and maybe even happened to go ahead and copy your primary character to a secondary or tertiary save slot. And, uh, and, and that way, if things got really messed up, you could go back to it. This was your way of rolling back to an earlier save, you know, before they were actually stored sequentially on a list that you could just kind of roll back to which one you wanted. And I'll get to the three hearts next to the name in a little bit. Let's get to the game proper. Help me. Please help me. Oh, yeah, that's right. There were no voiceovers, eh? <laughs> I am a prisoner in the dungeon of the castle. My name is Zelda. The wizard, Aghanim, has done something the other, to the other missing girls. Now, only I remain. Aghanim has seized control of the castle. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. Not castle, Aghanim. Uh, and is now trying to open the seven wise men's seal. I am in the dungeon of the castle. Will my princess be in the dungeon I find? If you remember, you remember. If you don't, don't worry about it. Please help me. You're my only hope. Oh, wait, no. That's a different franchise. This was a fun game, Beach Tuck. And on, Junior. I'm going out for a while. I'll be back by morning. Don't leave the house. It's going to be a short live stream if I don't leave the house. <laughs> That is, that is a giant bed, too. Okay. Now, you can pick up these pots, and there are stuff under them, but since I don't want to waste what's under them right now, uh, I'll skip over that in a minute. You've got a few different controls. A, uh, sorry, B is your primary button for talking to things. No, where's it A? It's A, sorry. You got the lamp! Now you can light torches and see your way in the darkness. So A is what you'll use to do things like pull on things and push on things and lift stuff up and all sorts of other things like that. B is what you'll use to uh, swing your sword when you get one. And X and Y will have their part to do too, to include using items and other equipment. Uh, the start button will get you your little menu over there so you can pick through your lofty inventory of one item. Why? Because that's all I found so far. Alright. If you look at the top, over to the left of the lamp on the top of the screen, you'll see a little bar that is empty. That is my magic meter. For some strange reason, using a torch to light stuff requires magic. I don't... Don't ask. I don't know. Oh, and uh, <laughs> Zelda will... Uh, prod you if you're not finding your way. Help me. I'm in the dungeon of the castle. Genius. That part's implied. Alright, let me finish explaining the interface and then we'll get get on to that. To the right of the lantern, you see the uh, little green gem thing. These are the rupees. This is where I get to remember to actually say rupees and not emeralds because somebody on the coffee craft server... 
Arcadius keeps calling the emeralds in Minecraft rupees because he is a huge fan of the Legend of Zelda franchise. Just about everything in there. They may look the same, but they're not the same. <laughs> okay, anyway. So, as you can see, I'm poor. I have zero rupees. The game is very optimistic in giving me three digits to... <laughs> I also have zero bombs, zero arrows, and those three little hearts are... That, that's my life. Those hearts are literally my life. Uh, you get hit once, and it goes down by half a heart. You get hit again, it goes down the rest of the heart. We will be able to find little pieces of heart and extend that out so I've got more than just the three. Okay, she's going to remind me again there's a hidden path. Uh, the hints will get excessively more clear. We'll go with clear as you go. You can, in fact, pick up all sorts of fun things in the game. And it is well worth trimming the shrubberies because you find things like rupees. You also find bees, which you, you don't want to find the bees. Well, after you get a bug net, you'll want to find the bees. So, yes, it is common to see people play and spend a lot of time doing this. I will, too. Uh, we'll get to these guys later. Obviously, I don't have the strength for that. If only there was an item that would help me later. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll give you, I'll give you that they're both used as currency. <laughs> uh, actually, it wouldn't be hard to do a data pack that modifies the loot table in Minecraft, so that way cutting grass gets you a uh, emerald randomly. All right, all right. I, I know Zelda. I'm, I'm, look, I'm getting to you. I'm trying to do a show. You're safe in the dungeon. You're not out in the rain like I am. Uh, doing the least effective shrubbery job. When, when, once I get a, uh, once I get a sword that gets a lot easier. Huh. There's a couple that can't be reached yet. I wonder if that will be important later. There's going to be a lot of stuff like that where you're going to run into things where you should kind of take note of that. Like, hmm, that looks inaccessible for the moment, but not forever. Oh, and what do we have for the sign? I will give 100 rupees to the man who finds the descendants of the wise men. The king. Uh, and yes, you will eventually be able to cut down the tall grass. That's something that's kind of survived. Oh, hi. I, I, ah, I didn't mean to find you yet. I, didn't, I actually didn't think you were there. Uh, you will eventually get some glass bottles. I know, Lee. Look, I'm getting there. Uh, you will eventually get some glass bottles and a net. And you're going to want to catch the fairies and hold them in a bottle. Because they will prevent you from dying that way. That sounds kind of... Hey, hey, you're not allowed in the castle, son. Go home and get some sleep. Son. Alright, sorry. I'm going to keep checking the shrubs for money for a little bit. Because uh, I got five rupees to my name. I got six rupees to my name. Hey, medic. Thank you for that. I, I need to get the thing where it, you know, posts up that you are amazing. It's on the to-do list. All right, we're getting to the secret path. I mean, it's paved. How secret is a secret path? It is paved. Uh, we will want to find those hearts later on as we go. Right now, we haven't lost anything. If we did, then we did something really wrong. I'm getting to you. You're in a dry dungeon outside of the rain. You've probably been fed. Maybe. Oh, bother. It's another fairy I can't catch. Huh. 
I wonder if there's something in the very artfully placed ground. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that sound. That takes you back, doesn't it? Uh, also, in the preparation for doing this series, I have had a certain theme song stuck in my head. I've actually found myself whistling it while working on a violin. Ah! B1! Oh, no, not that button. Oh, I can't do that button yet. Okay. Oh, no! Ugh, an on, Junior. I didn't want you involved in this. I told you not to leave the house. Take my sword and shield and listen. You can focus power in the blade. Hold the B button. Then release it using the secret technique handed down by our people. You can do it. Save the princess. Zelda is your... Not sister. That's a different franchise. There we go. So we can charge up the sword and do a whirling attack. Awesome. All right. What do we got next? Hello, friend. <laughs> did, did he just impale himself on my sword? I think he just impaled himself on my sword. Okay. Ooh, those little bottles restore your magic. A little at a time. Woohoo! The green rupees are worth one. The blue rupees are worth ten. And I, the red are worth something else that I don't remember. All right. Oh, no. There we, oh. There we go. I wasted a charge of magic. It doesn't replenish yet. But there we go. You light these guys up. And interesting things can happen. Red's 20. Okay, thank you. Um, with these, you get light in the area, will, which will help you see. And some secret entrances are triggered by lighting these little torches. So it's well worth the time to do that. Light and try to pull in stuff. Because there's all sorts of hidden things all over this game. Right now, we're in the uh, leaving the house. This is the tutorial level. I don't know if you noticed, but they've been... Uh, introducing different elements a little bit at a time so first we started by picking stuff up and reading signs yeah yeah but i'm not a dwarf i i, I think i think he's kind of sort of an elf or elf inspired elf adjacent half elf i've never entirely been sure all right here we are let's uh princess is going to yell at me any minute now isn't she but there are there is often stuff hidden in the tall grass so oh yeah and the whirling attacks will clear a wider area hi hi friend don't worry i'll get to you all right there we go. That's what it's all about. Show me the rupees. Oh, one of the other things that made its first appearance in A Link to the Past, the ability to move diagonal. So in addition to the four cardinal directions, you can actually move at a diagonal. You don't actually uh, change the direction you're facing. You still only face one of the four cardinal directions. But... You, uh, you do at least have the ability to strafe left or right. Hi! Hey! Ow! Well, that's not good. Ow! Sir, ow! I'll want them later, but now is not the time. I do hate that once you charge up your uh, whirling attack, you can't change the direction you're facing. <laughs> there we go. Is there, there, there should be a... Uh... Ow! Oh, 
I thought there was a there, I thought there was another heart somewhere nearby. Ah! Aha! Uh, I do like that being the tutorial level. They, they kind of ro well, railroaded's a loaded term. They do certainly uh, provide a limited number of directions and distractions at this particular juncture. There's not too many places you can go, so it's not too hard to go wrong. Ooh. Oh no! Did you lose sight of me? Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> How many of you guys can I get together? Ow! There we go. I'll take that. Alright. While I... There is a continue and a save and quit. Um... While I pause right here, uh, this is where this is where I'm going to take a really short break. Well, that was fun, and I hope you had fun too. Next episode should roll out tomorrow, unless tomorrow is a live stream day. Current schedule is over on my Twitch profile. There's a link in the description below. If you haven't already, follow me there. You'll get notified when I go live. And you'll be able to chat along as we record the next six episodes. You'll also be able to join along for some of the other stuff I do on Twitch. It's all up there on the channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel here. It really helps out. If you click the bell, you get notified of all the other stuff that goes up on the channel as well. Like Coffee Craft Livestream Archives, Future Games Revisited Episodes, and uh, various other stuff that strikes my fancy. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, quips, queries, quotes, comments, complaints, or quibbles, leave them in the comments below. Have fun, enjoy, and I'll see you next time.